much, Program Director. Well, clearly we're not moving at snail pace here. So 30 minutes, we're going to try to give you a good discussion. I am told also to let you know that this session will be live on Gab's FM. So allow me to welcome on stage the panelists for today's session. We'll start with Honorable Filda Nanikereng, Minister of Environment and Tourism of Botswana. Please let's welcome the Honorable Minister. I will also be joined this morning by Dr. Ibrahim Awal, Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture of Ghana. Welcome, sir. Also, we will have Deputy Minister of Environment, Climate Change, Tourism and Hospitality Industry, Zimbabwe, Mrs. Barbara Rodzi. And we will also have Mr. Desiree Lumu, Senior Trade Advisor, AFCFTA. Please, sir, can you join us? Thank you. So once again, a very good morning and welcome to all the panelists. We will start with our session this morning. Um, before we go to the leaders of the industry, let me ask uh, Mr. Desiree uh, Lumu to tell us a little bit, break it down for us on uh, really what your organization stands for and how do you see uh, the role of tourism within that uh, uh, sector. Thank you. Oh, thank you, moderator. Oh, good morning, everybody. So uh, I'm representing the AFCFTA. The AFCFTA is the African Free Trade Continental Era, which is formed by 55 countries who have signed the agreement. So basically, the AFCFTA is to build a single continental market where you have different sector when it comes to, to services. Among those uh, uh, sectors, you have the tourism sector. So what we are trying to do is to liberalize the tourism sector, whether it's in terms of uh, movement of uh, tourists, like uh, by traveling, whether it's in terms of investment by building hotels and restaurants in different countries, whether it's about uh, moving competencies from one country to another. So we are removing the barrier to assist the business sector to trade freely on the continent across these uh, 20, 54 uh, countries. As it stands now, 21 countries are already ready to start commencing trading tourism services on the continent. So this is where we start, to, uh, this is where we stand today. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, if I will go to you, uh, Mr. Awal, um, I understand the organization is also headquartered in your wonderful country, Ghana. So how do you see your government's role and also being that you head the tourism sector of Ghana really fitting in within the, the, the concept uh, of what AFCFTA stands for? Thank you, Elsia. Um, let me thank uh, African Tourism Partners for inviting me here, and let me thank uh, Botswana government for the hospitality. The best way for us to improve access and travel is for African countries to trade among themselves. That's the best way to spare tourism growth. According to the um, African Trade Report, only 14.5% of Africans are trading among themselves, which is very poor. As against 72% in Europe, among European countries, 53% among the Asian countries. The best way to enhance travel and to improve tourism is for African trade among themselves. Africans spend close to 600 billion every year buying goods from Asia, Europe, and America. That's how much we spend. If we trade among ourselves, we would move around Africa, just as we are doing here, and tourism will be enhanced. But for us to improve trade, we need to add value. All that Africa does is raw material. Botswana is doing diamond, is doing kettle. We don't add value. Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, for instance, 65% of the world's cocoa produced by Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. It's a 130 billion industry, dollar industry. Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire produce 65%, but they only earn 6 billion per annum. We must add value. We have to industrialize. If you industrialize, we will trade among ourselves. 
In Ghana, we have a program called the One District, One Factory, where each of the 260 districts is trying to have a factory to process. Once we add value, we'll be able to travel and make tourism bigger. That's why I want to urge African countries, let us move the barriers to trade and use tourism as a real opportunity for investment and for trade. So what I think is that let's move the fetters that block us, industrialize our economies in terms of adding value, then we can enhance trade. Why will African countries every day want to go to Japan? They want to go to Paris, London, US, to solve account problems. Why can't you come to Zimbabwe, come to Mozambique, come to Ghana, and solve account problems? Every day you hear that Macron is called African countries to solve problems of Africa. It doesn't make sense. We must solve our problems in Africa. And one other important issue is that when I came to this country, the roads are very neat. There's no garbage. The place is peaceful. To enhance Africa as a mice continent, let us make sure we improve security. Let us make sure that Africa is not turned, youth are not used as agents for destruction and for upheavals. Nobody wants to go to a place where there's insecurity. So the young people, once you want to help you as policymakers, don't allow yourself to use as agents of destruction. We need peace and stability in Africa. That can enhance trade and tourism. It's very important for us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, sir. And I think you echo uh, what I recently heard one of our African president also mentioning that we should look internally to solve our problems. But one of the one of the challenges that you talk about and which we recently also discussed at the Africa uh, ministers meeting the, the CAF in Tanzania was in regards to uh, connectivity, visa facilitation. Um, could you maybe tell us uh, something on your side, for example, what is Ghana has been doing in terms of uh, uh, facilitating uh, travels uh, to your country? You can use this one. Thank you. I think that we need to look at the regional visa. The AU and the subcontinents must look at visa. Why, for instance, if I come to Botswana in the southern, with a visa, why can't I travel around southern Africa with the same visa? We must look at the regional blocks in terms of visa acquisition. So if I go to Nigeria from Botswana, I must also use the same visa to other 15 countries. A regional block visa is very important for us. So Ghana is, by the end of next year, is going to make sure that all countries coming to Ghana would not require visa. We're working on that. You don't require a visa, or you come to the airport and get a visa on arrival. But we're removing all the obstacles to visa acquisition. This is very important for us. So African policymakers, let us not allow anybody to deceive us. These boundaries were created by colonial exploiters. After 50 something, 60 years of independence, let us move the barriers that divide Africa. We are one continent, the same people, the same destiny. And that destiny is to make sure that we remove poverty and put the lives of our people. So let's move all the barriers, those are sure barriers created by colonialists, and make sure that Africans can move from one place to another. It's very important for us. We are not a new colonialist continent. We are going to take our destiny in our own hands, make sure that we can move. 1.3 billion people with about 3.3 trillion dollars in terms of GDP is big. Let's leverage that, remove the barriers, and move around so I can enhance trade, tourism, and growth. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Honorable Filda Nani Kereng, uh, we are in Botswana, and um, you did uh, make references to the vision that your country has, but can you tell us maybe a little bit more what are the expectations, and also how is your country and the leadership leveraging on working uh, towards achieving that free trade movement amongst the, not only the SADC countries, but uh, uh, the continent itself. 
You are right. Uh, thank you very much. I've already mentioned how the tourism policy is focusing on opening up opportunities for connectivity within, you know, uh, service providers and procurers so that products can be sold and products can be bought. And uh, in terms of, you know, other sectors that we prioritize on, let me talk about first infrastructure and emphasize that we are emphasizing infrastructural overhaul to ensure that, you know, our roads are connected, prioritizing railroad, prioritizing air connectivity. And I must mention the Kasungula, Kasungula Bridge in the north that is actually a gateway to the you know uh, 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 rest of Sadek towards the north and also going into it it will link with the central and ultimately if it's connected to the other regions it can actually connect southern Africa to the rest of Africa towards the north so such as bridges such as roads and and, 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 and so forth I also want to mention that in terms of trade facilitation the Minister of Trade and Industry is actually operationalizing the Botswana version of the African uh, continental trade area objectives also within the SADC. And one of the things that we do through that ministry is to create special economic zones. And within this is to also enforce, you know, you know, uh, the facilitation of trade and business so that within those zones it's easier to acquire land, it's easier to get permits and licenses, it's easier to also create marketplaces for every goods that must be uh, uh, done. Within that, if I may take one of them that's around the airport, you know, the airport city that will just going to be a consolidated marketplace for every goods and services that must be uh, sold. We are also emphasizing on research that will also uh, focus on uh, uh, coming up with data, real-time data that we, it can guide policies, that can guide our programs. And in this research, we're also talking about market researches, product research. Uh, product profiling and, and the government has actually instituted a research fund to enable researchers to help us with information. We need to know, you know, where these policies should go, where they should focus based on data. And I think I need to mention that also uh, we have uh, 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 the, the new uh, arts and culture because we want to make sure that we are able to promote our products by utilizing the skill and the knowledge and the art that we have you know, within the country. So we can use drama, we can use dance, we can use music, we can use stories, and we can be able to sell our products. We need to be able to sell our own products. In terms of cross-border also, we have just uh, agreed at Cabinet uh, this week that we are going to uh, uh, implement the South to South objective within the SADC that connects countries on trade, on tourism on, on different uh, in, uh, uh, actions. And I think that takes further the memoranda of agreements and memoranda of understanding that we have between countries being bilateral to being sub-regional regional and going to multi-lateral. You know, Let me stop there. I think I'll have time for more. Thank you, Honorable Minister. We see that uh, definitely there's the political will in order to be able to make this work first and foremost but also interesting to to understand that you're also walking the talk not just signing uh, the mous but really going to the implementation of it um, let me ask the similar question to you honorable uh, minister from uh, zimbabwe uh, in terms of what is your country doing and uh, how do you leverage especially on uh, bringing forward tourism to wonderful Zimbabwe. You know, we have, you have the, the Vic Falls, but also many other beautiful assets to visit in your country. All right, uh, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, in Zimbabwe, we are using a whole of government approach to this. Why? Because um, Zimbabwe is a landlocked country, and we see Africa continental free trade area is a big opportunity to grow our tourism sector uh, through using uh, gastronomy, uh, tourism is key to us. Cultural tourism is also key. Leisure tourism is also key. But as we know that Africa continental free trade is centered on trade. I like the topic that you brought us here to say it's about policy and thought. If we really want to go deep into thinking about this, Africa continental free trade area is taking us back to better trade as African countries. Though at the moment or in this, in this age, it's about exchanging money unlike better trade. As such, 
it's encouraging us to share our norms and our value system as Africans. As alluded to by the minister from Ghana, that we need to do things our way as Africans. We need to make our own decisions as Africans. Zimbabwe wants to take advantage of this through using cultural tourism, through using leisure tourism to come together with other African countries to build trade back to where it used to be together with other African countries. As such, infrastructure is key for us as a country to ensure that as a landlocked country, we are happy that we are next door to a developed country, which is South Africa. And we know that a lot of products will be traded from South Africa into other countries. Therefore, rail is key. Therefore, road infrastructure is very key. And at the moment, our highway from Bait Bridge going all the way to Chirundu that links Zambia and also another way to, to Malawi and Botswana, those highways are under construction at the moment. And of course, the rail infrastructure is very key to ensure that how best will we be able to tap into this opportunity, particularly as the tourism sector. We will be wanting to be on the round table with the region that we are involved with. I would want to encourage that region should be sitting down and see how best we as the countries, like for example in Sadiq, can tap into growing and sustain our tourism sector. Having discussions together as a region. I'm just using Sadiq because we as Zimbabwe are in Sadiq. Our service should be the same. Our infrastructure should be the same. We want to avoid competition between countries because we are one. Let's come together. Let's train our people together. That is the only way that I personally think African, Africa free, uh, Africa continental free trade area can be successful. Of course, it would be a dream to say Africa is one can come together and have the same specifications. But if we start with regions, and grow into one, I'm sure we can achieve our goals. So Zimbabwe is up to this, and we know that infrastructure is key, so that we'll be moving together with others. I thank you for now. Thank you, Honorable. A very strong message there, not compete, but to co co cooperate. So cooperation between countries is key, because uh, obviously we all complement each other, as you rightly said. Maybe uh, somebody can give us an idea if we are okay with time. I'd like to move to Mr. Desiree. Having heard three countries already here um, at the leadership level, the commitment that their country have said uh, they are putting and engaging towards uh, achieving the oper operationalization of this uh, continental free trade, what else is uh, the Secretariat looking to achieve or put forward to continue to leverage countries, especially those that are putting tourism also as a, a main, main priority in their national agenda. Uh, thank you once more, moderator. So in terms of uh, how the Secretariat assists the country to take benefits of the AFCFTA, we have one tool that we call the Guided Trade Initiative. We already started for, with to, uh, for, for goods, now we are, by, we are about to start it for uh, services. And on services, we have targeted tourism as a key sector. And around tourism, we also have finance, uh, transport, and telecommunication. So what is meant to be done under the guided trade is to bring together the private sector who is ready to trade to assist them on how to use the AFCFTA principles and rules based on the commitment made by state parties. So practically what, what will happen. For instance, in the tourism sector, we will bring this audience of business people, whether they are on the accommodation, hotel, or tourist uh, the travel agency, to sit in the same room and see how we can, for instance, a travel agency operator from uh, Botswana establish a company in Ghana. This is, we are going to assist them on how they can come in and how they can run it. 
We do the same because to run a travel agency, to run a company, you need finance. We will bring CS, uh, CAOs from, from central banks together using this platform to see how they can assist those operators to have access to finance. We will do the same with air transport. We are bringing them in maybe in May 2023 to sit together, use the SATAM as well as the commitment by state party to see how far they can go in terms of lifting taxes or easing the movement of tourists and tourist operators on the continent. So this is the step forward we are taking in the services sector to make this uh, African trade, continental free trade era become real. Thank you. And uh, again, you mentioned the, the role of the private sector. I'm told we have a little bit more time. Um, maybe a last question that I'd like to put to all our panelists uh, to just briefly mention, in your own view, uh, what are maybe two key measures that should be put in place by uh, the African countries to really foster uh, the private sector participation at the Pan-African level and in order to really push forward and operationalize this African continental future? Let's start with you, Honorable. Thank you very much. I think once the operational framework is set in terms of regulations, you know, policies and opportunities, I want to emphasize on the importance of profiling what different African countries have, which are marketable, that can be traded within the continent. We profile, then I can know that I can get this and this that can, I, I can use for my business, for my life in Ghana, and how do I get that best? And we also need to emphasize on skills development and training. We should be able to train within the continent. The skills that are needed to facilitate the economies. I don't have to go to, I don't know which continent I can mention here, where I know we have got capacitated and well-experienced institutions that can build the skills that we need. And we need to also to talk about the greening of the economy, where we are focusing on natural resources and producing you know, sustainable you know, you know, utilization, promotion, and produce products there that are marketable, that you can boast of as Africa you know, you know, you know, products. That can be accessed, that can be be of quality that can be consolidated in marketplaces. Finally, I think it's very importantly that we look at African leadership championing African leadership that can do campaigning to change mindsets about Africa. Why should I not choose an African product because it's African? We have got wrong mindset about ourselves. So I want to get this material from Ghana and do this suit and be proud. So we proudly, you know, love our Africa and our, our African products and our African kind of service. And we actually lead in those so that we can be able to change mindsets and focus within and love our own pride of Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well said. Minister? Thank you. Africa is largely a small business continent. There are 98 million small micro enterprises in Africa. 85% of businesses in Africa are small, are small businesses. What we need to do as policymakers is to empower the private sector, not rhetorics. Let's give them support, training, capital, exposure, networking. If we train them and they capacitate, because the tourism largely is implemented by the private sector. So as a policy, we need to improve the capacity, the competence of our small private sector, engage them. Let the private sector in, in, in Botswana, in Ghana, around Africa meet regularly so that it can define and will help them create an environment to help them. So I think private sector development is key. Without private sector, we're not going anywhere. And let us not follow the CNN effect. Africa is not all about disease, cools, and hunger. There's much more to do in Africa than what we see on CNN. Let's not look at the CNN. So I want to urge the media, champion the drive to improve tourism, trade, and investment in Africa. The media builds that African brand. That will sell. That will make everybody come to Africa and see it. Africa is as good as any other continent. The CNN effect is a colonial cliche. Live it, build an African brand that is hospitable, stable, rich, and has progression. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I think you made that very clear from the beginning that we should own our own narrative. We should tell our own stories, our own positive stories, because there are lots to tell on the continent. Excellency, over to you. Uh, thank you very much. As alluded to yesterday by the youths and the women, open door police is very key. 
let's open our doors to the private sector. But also, let me say, it's a reciprocal relationship. It's, uh, it's not very difficult for politicians to, 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 to have policies in place, but it's very difficult to implement. And when we have policies in place, it's private sector that has to help in implementation. But I would say, let's continue or strengthen the PPPs, uh, private, um, uh, public-private partnerships. It also makes our relationships better and improves our relationships as the government uh, and or public and private. Let's work together. I also, as a uh, minister of Botswana has alluded to, let's have uh, tangible economic transformation with the in inclusivity. Inclusivity of our, of our communities. Communities should be considered as private sector. Let's work together with them from the grassroots going up to the corporates. I think it will improve our relationships. Mindset is very key. Pan-Africanism within our private sector is also very key. So you hear how passionate my boss on my left is, is about mindset of being an African and taking Africa together as Africans. It also has to apply to private sector, not just to governments or politicians. It's our continent. Let's grow it together for us and for our people. I thank you. Thank you. Any last words from you, Mr. Desiree? Yes, uh, for us as the continental free trade area, we really plead strongly for a collaboration between government and the private sector. The government has already agreed to establish a framework. Now we want this private sector to come in. But please, our ministers, accept the inclusion, the involvement of the private sector in this aspect. They are the ones to be supported. They are the ones who drive this business. So we really plead that the private sectors come together and work with the government to use the AFCFTA. Because by the end of the day, as the Minister of Ghana said, we want to have champi African champions on tourism. We want to have a, a hotel brand we can establish in South Africa, Bur Burundi, Botswana, across the continent. Instead of having these other brands that are coming here. And then, so that's what we are working on and that's what we are looking at with the, uh, the collaboration between the private sector and the, the, the government. So we really plead of that, for that uh, collaboration. Thank you. I think all our panelists agree. Uh, some key points uh, that they all aligned on is really to focus on skills development. Uh, travel facilitation is one of them. And also to involve more the private sectors and communities as well. And as was mentioned, leadership, being political will, and also to empower more the SMEs and the private sector. So I am told that we have to wrap up here. This is a, a, a topic that requires more deeper uh, conversation, but uh, we have heard from uh, three uh, leaders, especially in the tourism sector, of how their country are looking at this. Maybe we can allow just one comment or question from the floor, if you have. Start by, I see one hand up, sir. Start by, ma'am. Introduce yourself and keep it short and sweet. Thank you. Okay, um, special greetings to everyone. My name is Sam Gelisiweno Musa Shangwe, and I just wanted to commit by saying that I'm so happy to hear that there has been a gap between corporates and the private sector. But my question is really centered on the informal economy. Isn't it possible for us to have um, a reform in spatial regulation in terms of providing our people in the community free trading licenses because if we are social policy makers and we want to see predominant change I believe creating an inclusive system should be free thank you thank you anybody want to pick up on that mr. Desiree you want to uh, yes thank you colleagues so with regard to the informal sector so this is the 
the, the trade that is happening on the ground, let, let, let us put it that, is, is an informal way, is not captured on the statistics. So once we want to bring them in the AFCFTA, because the AFCFTA is also about to create this opportunity, they have to, they have to come on board by using this, the, the principles and rules that, are, that have been agreed. So we want all these uh, actors in the informal sector to come in the former sector so that they can fully use and fully benefit of this, uh, this profile. So that's why in terms of cross-border, we are creating, uh, we are easing the movement of surrounding uh, uh, cross-border traders between two different countries and between two different regions. So this is a tool that we are having. We are also assisting in lifting all the non-tariff measure, whether you are dealing in terms of a formal operator or not, so we are having a, a mechanism to monitor and to report any constraint that you face in this regard. So these kind of actors are also part of our process and we really plead that they come in the formal aspect of the trade so that they can fully benefit of the advantages of the AFCFTA. Absolutely. Minister, you wanted to add something to that? I just wanted to add that uh, in Botswana when we realized that you know, business you know, support and promotion and capacitation within the ministry was lacking in terms of capturing you know, the informal sector and bringing them to that level where they can trade, where they can grow and become you know, the private sector that you know. The government established a new ministry, Ministry of Entrepreneurship, that is a capacity building ministry that will leave an informal sector you know, practitioner from where they are in terms of how they can profile themselves, what they need to know in terms of trading, in terms of of product, you know, quality in terms of in terms of service quality, and when we do that, then we are able to put them to a place where we can be able to engage them. Like some of us, some of them will be engaged in mice activities, like we've started doing. So the Botswana Tourism Organization is also involved in terms of tourism service quality. We take the informal sector, we train them, we make sure that they understand how they should, you know, provide the service and bring the product that we are even using as, you know, gifts and uh, souvenirs and 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 award whatever recognition, you know, stuff. So that ministry is very key to bridge that gap, and I think it's going to help us a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've heard the leaders. They will be here throughout the day, so use this opportunity if you want to pick up the discussions and uh, pick their brains and uh, have a discussion with them. So I would like to thank you all, and uh, let's give a big round of applause to our panelists, and thank you for this opportunity. We need to remain for a picture. That's what they are saying. All right. Well, thank you so much, um, Elsia, together with your panelists. Um, thank you so much as well for trying to keep to time. We move to